tapping. <laughs> well, well, pretty much, yeah. It, it decided to be a, a jerk about it and say, I'm going to wait till he finishes that sentence. And then, <laughs> and then Google was like, and we're live. <laughs> you know, the first word is yapping. Yeah. <laughs> first word in the line. Okay. Which is appropriate. <laughs> yes, it will. I was thinking the very same thing. Yeah, we're all going to be yapping for an hour. So, hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, all you folks, for being here with me, as always. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, well, it, uh, uh, yes. Uh, some so, random geek. You wanted to mention the the uh, the Ghibli Fest and where people. Oh can... yes, since and since uh, you see, you're a great fan of like the underseen movie of Grace of the Firefly, and I agree yeah. that is the underseen movie. Yeah. I'm going to go to screen share and yes, share everything. There's Brent oh. Ricker, but uh, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, through Phantom Events, the G Kids presenting through Phantom Events has done Studio Ghibli Fest. They did this last year too, where they show six movies, one a different movie each month. It started in March this year with Ponyo, and I skipped that because I I, I don't like Ponyo. You can find me on that. But then they show like <laughs> The Cap Returns. I like that. Uh, Poco Rosso, another underrated movie. Palm Poco. I really like that one. Some people didn't like that one for reasons, but like I I I got a saw saw Princess Mononoke just last weekend. Actually, and so next month is uh, the classic, the roar drama of uh, Graves of the Firefly by Ishio Takahara, who did actually uh, pass away earlier this year at the age of 84, if I remember correctly. And so August 12th is a Sunday, and there'll be a dub version, and August 13th, which is a Monday, that will be uh, the subtitled version, and August 15th will be another, which will be the Wednesday, which is another dub version. And that's how the uh, G Kids and with the uh, fan events have done this, where like they show. Uh, alternating days of like dub, sub, and dub. So if you want to, if you know which version you want to see, uh, both versions are fine in my opinion. Then you can, you know, you, you pick the dates for those uh, uh, showings. And I'll stop screen sharing since there's Lauren right there. <laughs> Speaking of which, he's got uh, his own camera. Yes. I, I, um, I think I saw Phantom Events was doing a, a you know, one time only event with uh, Princess Mononoke. Uh, as part of what they were doing, which which I, I was sort of surprised at, and that was rather nice. Yeah, yeah the twenty year anniversary. I did saw that, and I'm glad I wow. remember it did because the short that they showed before that was actually like a like music video or something, where it's just like two Ghibli, like basically it was like a war was going on, and like these like uh, soldiers found like an angel and stuff like that, and they basically like released that angel, and that that the short itself was a fun interesting like a uh, short little film but for me and my brothers it was interesting because wait a minute we've seen that before that's the coke commercial and because in the like the amv hell like the first one or something like that they show that footage and the music they played in that uh, anime music video amv was a coke commercial because there was like <laughs> brandless coke cans all around that short and stuff like that so yeah i'd <laughs> like to teach the world to sing <laughs> it wasn't that one it was the japanese version but yeah i know uh, yeah i get what you mean but also another thing it's like even if you've seen the movies before like i've already seen great those five hours in the theater yeah. before actually they always play a little short or a little something that like you can like ooh, that's neat to like see so there's a reason to go to the movie theaters to see it like last week oh, princess man okay they showed a exclusive sneak peek to a new upcoming documentary about Hayao Miyazaki on his yeah. like upcoming project where he's working on a short that's 3D animated. So that's quite interesting. Man, and it is finally, hard. Yeah, go ahead. And finally, uh, if you're anyone who's fans of like uh, Isio Takahata, Grace of the Firefly, uh, not as dramatic, but uh, definitely gets you in the feels. His last film, the one he did before he died, and he spent he he and his team spent seven years uh, drawing it and oh. tell in the work Tales of Princess Kaguya. I mentioned this in the uh, when I asked you what is the one of the your favorite underseen movies. Yeah, I remember. Friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, one problem with Tales of Princess Kakua, at the end, there's like, and so like this happens, like, wait a minute, we didn't know that at all. And it came out of nowhere and you're just like, okay, that's a thing now. It was in the original fable of the Tale of the Bandit Cutter. So it's like, yeah. something comes out of nowhere, I'll just say that. It, re it reminds me, I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen the movie, but it, I, what, 
whenever something like super important happens out of nowhere near the end of a movie, I always think of the first time I read Macbeth and you're at the very end of the play and someone says, oh yeah, by the way, Lady Macbeth is dead. She killed herself. I'm like, <laughs> really? Since when? <laughs> like, well, that, that seemed kind of important. <laughs> well, Jesus. Um, Shakespeare, not that great yeah. writer. He forgot to like, oh yeah, I should probably should mention that. Yeah, like, yeah, Bill, Bill like, what happened to Lady Macbeth? Oh shit. Let's take it as this plot line with just plot type with just one line of dialogue. There yeah. you go. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have to deal with it. They can have my fan theories about what happened off screen, off stage. <laughs> needs to kill the sequel. So oh, well. <laughs> I knew Lady Macbeth was the sequel. Come on. Yeah. Well, there's always, um, you know, Shostakovich's Lady Macbeth of Matyansk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. I mean that I mean that got him into such hot water. I mean he literally was writing for for his life after that. I mean certainly as a I mean as it come to this fourth and fifth symphonies, that's something I've, I've been into probably just about up to my eyeballs because it I mean just the whole story of that what was going on in Russia in the in the thirties. Oh yeah. And uh, well, what was known as the Great Terror. Yeah. And um, uh, I mean he had to uh, he basically. He retracted his fourth symphony at fundamentally at the point of a gun and then wrote the fifth symphony uh, to save his life. Whew. Yeah. Not the ideal <laughs> circumstance for an artist to be in, is it? And, and, and it's, am Jesus. it's amazing because yeah. I mean, ultimately he, he, first of all, I, I, I will insist with my dying breath. He's probably the, the best, the greatest symphonist of the 20th century. He wrote 15 and with the exception of stuff like maybe the second and the third, which were uh, propaganda pieces, and the twelfth, which I listened to recently, and it, it's, it's, it really doesn't have a whole lot working for it. But I mean, you listen to stuff like uh, the, I mean, the fourth, I'm nuts for. I've had a chance to actually hear it live twice, and it is enormously powerful. The tenth, I mean. I mean, the tenth he was able to write after Stalin had died, and the second movement is alleged to be a portrait of Stalin. It's powerful, but it ain't pretty. <laughs> so, so there you go. Yeah. yeah and um, wow. And, and before I forget about it, yeah. Mike, I wanted to ask you something. Yeah. Um, man. A long time ago, and I actually collected this on DVD. I saw a neat. Uh, I think it's a French Czech cooperative called Fantastic Planet. Have you ever oh, seen it? And I what do you think that. of it? I haven't seen it. No, I don't know if I've even heard of it, to be honest. It is neat. It's the yeah. story of uh, apparently what's left of the Terran uh, civilization, who have now become known as Ohms, and they are held in this planet of giants. <laughs> wow. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what the name the giants are called, but it's, it's, it's on the fantasy end of the spectrum. Uh, it's, uh, the, the animation is on the stiff side. But yeah. I, I just the story that it tells, I just get a big kick out of it. Geek, I think you'd get a huge kick out of it. I'm looking. I'm. I'm just looking at the screenshots right now, and it's already. A, I'm. I'm sold on the screenshots. Just, <laughs> He's uh, already all over. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. If, if if you can find a trailer for it, I. Re that I, remember, yeah. I, I remember seeing the trailer <laughs> on television because uh, it was a local thing that they were doing. And I ended up seeing it somewhere in the mid seventies at uh, the, I think it was the Cleveland Heights Public Library, and yeah, jaw hit floor, really. I mean, it just, it was an amazing story, and it's the ending of it. I thought was really, really neat in what it did. I won't spoil it for you, but the ending, you know, just how things evolved between uh, the Ohms and and the dominant race, whose name again I still can't remember, but. It's. I think it's really one of a kind. I'll well, check it out. I've, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of it before. And it's also available on YouTube, Prime Video, and oh, Google wow. Play Movie and TVs and other services for about like a three dollars. And wow. so, and yeah. iTunes too. So it's yeah. it's really easy to, like, to come by. So I'm going to check uh, it out. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's sort of nice to be able to slide something in there that uh, you know, maybe you hadn't known about before. Yeah, the, thank you. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll watch pleasure, it. Then, Steve. <laughs> I'll watch it, and then I can piss Jason off by watching that before I watch Glow. <laughs> he's been he's been on my ass for like six months at least. He's like, we're not talking yet? about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, are we? Uh, or are the, we? The Netflix show based on, <laughs> not the original. Okay, not not the original. Yeah, but I'm sure I'll love it. I just haven't had time to watch it yet, and um, mm -hmm. I got off the hook 
this time because we 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 usually we record our podcasts today, but we had to record it yesterday for a scheduling thing. And I got I got off light because he didn't mention glow. So <laughs> I think I'm, I'll be okay for at least another two weeks. Um, that, well, that's a good question for everyone here. I've already mentioned like the like underseen movies that I wanted to share to all my friends, and like yeah, a lot of them are anime movies because, like Steve yeah. says, like there are even a lot of anime movies that are well known amongst anime circles, but yet are not generally known uh, through the general audience. But uh, open to everyone else, what are other your favorite underseen movie that you want to share with your friends? Boy, that's a good question. Um, well, I obviously I just mentioned one, and yeah. that, that uh, I remember I was occasionally ducking in on IMDb.com, you know, looking and say, "Hey, they got anything to say about it?" And all of a sudden, you know, yeah, somebody mentioned DVD. I go, "Really?" You know, ching, you know <laughs> immediately. You. Okay, I got to briefly interrupt because uh, little Arno is watching. She missed oh, hi, me on Facebook. I'm Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Uh, please give her everyone my, my best to everyone. And so from little Ano to everyone else, mwah, mwah. <laughs> I have to make two kisses because she's French. I've learned that this from the from messing it up for before. And two, two <laughs> you, kisses is metric. You messed it up. And she said, no, no, two kisses. <laughs> well, someone else corrected me. And it's like, you're right. No, yeah. it, it was Christy. She said, you have to do two kisses. It's French. <laughs> <laughs> kisses. Kisses like they have a kiss named after them, so they would know. Mm. I mean, yeah, but that's one can, you change, can you change French kisses over like Google Hangouts? I don't know. I have tried. <laughs> don't let's. You, let's no, you, you need the three D option. Yeah, you need some extra attachments. Yeah, yeah. 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 Frankly, I think we need to sensor your camera. If you, do. you need one of those things that people buy, like the Pornhub or something. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> corrected the feature on those Pornhub videos. Yes, yeah, I yeah, yeah. They need to. <laughs> they, we need one of those, and I don't think Google supports that. At least not. not, no, not I already, you, Google, Google I already have my sex toys anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep uh, it in the case again. It looks uh Geek, it looks, you naughty boy. <laughs> looks like a Dalek with the top taken off. It's like just a, or like a, a Dalek was on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, little Arno just messaged me again. She is not sending French kisses. <laughs> okay, well I, I didn't mean to suggest that she was. <laughs> well, she's she's French and she's sending kisses. So That's in, in a yes. way, in a, you could... I mean, she's a girl and she's my friend. So you know, technically. <laughs> Steve, in the immortal words of George Carlin, remember you can prick your finger, but you can't finger your exactly uh, dot, dot. exactly. <laughs> and you know what's amazing is how many of those seven dirty words you can say on TV now. Yeah, like you can't say all of them, but you can say more than you could say when he came up with that routine. He actually went to Congress to like uh, report on that, if I remember correctly, or if I heard before. So like that's interesting. Yeah. He, so it's like it was determined by if that's true, it's determined by George Collin what you can and cannot say on television. <laughs> I like to I like to think of members of Congress like going to Carlin and saying, "Sir, what words may we not say?" <laughs> We will, we will tell the FCC again. to rule out anything you say, sir. Do this FCC have rules on that sort of thing? I'm sure they yeah. do have rules on, like, anything else. But, like, I'm not sure if, like, they have, like, rules on what is or, is or not. Loud I, don't know if, I don't know if they have specific words. But I know it's, it's, it's one of those. It's like the old, the, uh, the old saying about pornography. I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. Yeah, you know, which, like it's the same thing about the world's profanity. biggest cop out. Yeah, exactly. Because you could be, well, that looks like porno to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let Arno just called me, or I think she just, I'm not sure if Leto Arno has called me or everyone else pervs, but wow. I'll go and believe that she called me perv because yeah. she was not sending French kisses. But also, another message from Chris Sai, I can't get in Patreon and to put me through the link. Oh well, next time. Uh, let the me let the message to everyone that I'm not skipping out. And hello, hello, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi, Chris. Yeah, I don't know what the some sometimes people have weird random technical issues where everything seems to work fine for me and mm. for most everybody else, but I get like a Patreon message going. It doesn't work. I can't get in, and and mm. it's not full. So I there's you know. Well, I can I can just like a fucking this. Google. 
It, it, I can just yeah. like message Chris the copy the link and uh, give it to him in Messenger. Maybe that will work because it's strange like that. Yeah, so I'm going to try that since the the Hangout's not full right now. You and do with not your have permission, permission, Chris, share the link. What? <laughs> that is my link. You can't share that. That link is sacred, man. <laughs> okay, you broke, you broke the code. Yeah, I think I'm, the longest streak is uh, I've missed three Hangouts in a row due to technical issues yeah. at one point. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was just a long span where I was like, oh, I, I can't get into Patreon, not, so I can't do the link. Not can't, happening this time. Like, the link's not working for me. Oh, my, my camera's broken, and my mic's broken. <laughs> <laughs> at least at least it was a different technical issue. It wasn't the, the exact same yeah. one every time. That would have been very annoying. It's like, when you do, it's like when you do a magic trick, and it's the same thing, but you use a different sleight of hand technique every time. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. so it looks different. A little I'm talking to Eli too much. <laughs> no, actually, you know what it, do you know what it is? It's not. I, I surprisingly, I don't think I've ever had a long conversation with Eli about magic. Probably because he knows way more than I do about it, and it would just be boring for him. Because I'd be like, "Did you, did you like David Copperfield?" <laughs> and, and he'd be like, "Oh God, you know." I didn't look like one on one on about for an hour about that. And like, if, <laughs> if I were to talk to Eli about magic, I just do the whole thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it probably be like a conversation. He's like, "No, I'm trying to tell you about hand techniques." I'm like, do it again, do it again, no, do it again. Make the coin disappear. <laughs> Make it come out of my eye. He has a second coin. He's just hiding a second coin. That's how it switches hands. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but I've been watching a lot of Penn and Teller fool us. So that's 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 oh, why I've got magic on the brain. Because yeah, and I, I got I got super excited yesterday because we watched an episode and I figured out how there's a guy who was on. Uh, who does a really awesome version of like the jumping coin trick where it goes from one hand to the other, but he does it with poker chips and he does mm. it with different colored poker chips. So it looks like, hey, there's Chris. Hi, mm -hmm. Chris. So it looks like he's doing something different, but he's actually doing like the same sort of thing. And it was really exciting when I figured it out. So, and that's my story. Hi, Chris. <laughs> and you're sticking to it? <laughs> Hello. I found you. you. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, some, of, some of those cards that people do are just outrageous, right? Oh, it's, like, uh, that one guy had those, like, the, he was a Hispanic guy, and he had, like, crazy, like, colorful cards, and he would, like, change them from one to another. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I was looking at them, like, what the fuck is going on? It's like, there's, like, five different patterns on each card. I don't even know. So, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I've seen that trick. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's, it's, it takes, I think it takes a lot of guts to be a magician and to go on TV and do a card trick because everybody has seen a million card tricks, but that, especially I guess, especially when you're doing it in front of Penn and Teller. Yeah. Who? Yeah, exactly. I saw one guy, I forget who it was. And I can't remember if this was one of the tricks that fooled them or not, but the, the, the card that the person picked was the three of clubs, which is the card that Penn and Teller always force on people. And I thought, Oh man, that's like a shot across the bow. You don't take <laughs> you don't use your own card. <laughs> <laughs> like that's no 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 i actually do have a particular the, the two cards that i like because i used to play poker so i just like think oh four two well it's 42 the answer to lock the universe and everything but like <laughs> I, but four two offsuit i think i don't know i don't remember the suit specifically though i won three online poker tournaments because of four two i don't often play that because it's a terrible hand i thought of but just like how Doyle Brunson has like the deuce 10, I have the deuce four. But I it's been like three five years since I played poker, so there's that, of course. I didn't I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> poker journey. I played I played I, I went to a poker game once like 10 years ago, and I was just sitting there like really? Yeah. I mean it was all right, but it was just, you know, I was like, okay, so you do this every week? <laughs> Uh, okay, just, yeah, I do that, but it's just, doesn't, it's just like, like, doesn't grab me. Right, because when I'm thinking, I'm think, but as I'm thinking, that's a poker player. It's like, okay, that guy like has photo. Okay, every time this guy gets his cards, he always looks at it. So if he's playing with his cards, like, mm, and he's on the big blind or the button, okay, I know just raise it every time almost because he just like <laughs> he's going to fold. So I'm only got like two other players that I have to like worry about with unknown cards. And then okay, I got this hand. I then I can go on the poker jargon as well. I'm always thinking though. That's the thing with like I'm at the poker tables. I'm always thinking. Thinking. You know, yeah, poker's not that exciting of an expected sport. It's nine people sitting around the table. <laughs> and yet yeah, it's on TV all the time. I'll tell you yeah, what, if you, if you want something, I'm, what I, when you brought up poker, it's interesting. The first thing I thought of was Maverick, the movie. 
Yeah, oh yes, I love that movie. Yeah. Actually. I, 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 that I mean, say what you like about Mel Gibson in that movie, him and Garner and uh, and uh, Foster. I thought the chemistry was just spectacular. Maverick is a good movie. Yeah, it, yes, it's, I it's a, it, I, I, and it, I amaze myself. I think I've got it on Laserdisc, but I don't have it on DVD and or or Blu-ray or whatever have you. And I think I'm gonna have to get it because it's. I mean, it's just too much fun to have to mm. deal with pan and scan or whatever have you. Which yeah. 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 Well, 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 can I say what I want, uh, uh, oh, what yes, I want about Mel Gibson? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because you just went over that with the uh, seven dirty words thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. No, no, you, uh, the seven dirty words. Yeah, yeah seven just, dirty words. Yeah. Those, are, those are just what I have to say about Mel Gibson. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, Lovely. I mean, since Maverick, let's say he devolved a bit. Yeah. Let's let's see. Uh, uh, shit, piss because he's always drunk. Shit, piss, fuck, mother, uh, mother, motherfucker, <laughs> cock sucker. Uh, you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's, well, he that, he said something derogatory about the breast implants of the girlfriend he threatened to murder. So that that counts. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> I think Mel, Mel Gibson has some depression issues. It's just like it, it's also tied to his alcoholism as well, and that like and his Catholicism. There's that too. And his yeah. particular yeah, Catholicism, his yeah, very no strange shit. Catholicism. Yeah. Jesus Chainsaw Massacre was not a good movie. I mean, the last hour of the movie should have been cut down to just thirty minutes and like cut out half of the runtime of each of the scenes, and it would have been a <laughs> horrible movie. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it. Not interested in seeing it. You know, just uh, it just see Last Temptation of the Christ is dead, or the or the comedy version, Life of Brian. Yeah, I would say Last Temptation is a lot better than. Uh, yeah, than I Melody. actually read the book, and and I thought the book the, the book at least had some interesting ideas in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's a movie I, I can't. I'm, we should, we're probably going to do that for late seating at some point. I would imagine. I I I think earlier this year I I pitched uh, doing the Passion to Jason, and I think he, he kind of shrugged it off. Was like, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, you know. I don't know if he's that eager to watch it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, he may not be eager to watch it, but he should be eager to tear the living shit out of it. Yeah, you know, I'm interested to watch it again because I've only seen it, I think, once when I saw it when it came out in the theaters, yeah. and I was very, I, I had very complicated feelings about it. Like there, there were things about it. <laughs> There were things about it that I really admired from a filmmaking yeah. perspective, but then there were also like the subject matter and, and the thematic stuff. And, you know, I did read a lot of it as anti-Semitic and it was sort of like, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, the, I was the viol if the violence and torture porn don't overwhelm the entire thing, <laughs> I, I'd be surprised. I'd be stunned. You know, I, I, and I, again, I have not seen it, but I've seen enough clips and enough stills to know. You know, I mean, yeah. come on, really? I mean, this is pornography. It really. is extremely violent, and when the violence starts, it pretty much is continuous. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that always bothers me about the passion or any passion instances is that, of course, they try to make it as brutal and horrible as possible to be like, "Hey, see, this is <laughs> therefore fair exchange for all your sins or some yeah. shit." Yeah. Like, is yeah, it, which no? doesn't change the fact that Jesus had a bad weekend for your sins. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, with you that they really beat exactly him up. But it, <laughs> like they, they always oversell that point. It's like it's not a good fucking point. Like it doesn't matter yeah. how long they beat him or torture him. Yeah, <laughs> did they did they beat him and torture him forever? Eternity. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, would anybody who, right now? No, yeah, he's would not. anybody who hung out at the Hanoi Hilton, you know, swap, you know, five years in the Hanoi Hilton for a weekend of putting up with that crap? Yeah, that's a I'll good point. That there's a bunch of people, Marines especially. I would not put that past. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kick the complete shit out of you for a couple of days, or we'll torture you for five years. Which would you mm -hmm. like? Uh, let me think about it. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, and Thomas thing. Paine once said that the real punishment for Jesus would have been to keep living. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and have to listen to a have to listen to all the apologists and b listen to all the counter apologetics. I think, mm. yeah, I think, but you know, that's one. Of, speaking of the Last Temptation of Christ, it's I think it's a lot of people's favorite scene in that movie. I think it's probably my favorite scene when during the Last Temptation sequence, when when Jesus survives the cross. Mm -hmm. And then it's many years later, and he sees Paul 
in the in the town preaching about Jesus. And, I love that scene too. Yeah, yeah. And, and and he's preaching about the death and resurrection of Jesus, and Jesus like goes up to Paul, and he's like, "What are you doing? Like, I I didn't die. I was saved. I I didn't die on the cross. You're telling lies about me." And Paul says, "It doesn't matter. Yeah, people, people need God. People want to hear this. It, and yeah. if you if you tell if you tell the people I'm preaching to that I'm lying, then my followers will just kill you." Yeah. When the le when the legend is better than the fact, print the legend. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has to sort of walk away. He's like, "Shit, this sucks." Okay. <laughs> you <laughs> know, that's, like that's true. That's true with our historians. When some of our historians are like more of storytellers than they are as historians, or it's like histor historians mistake the the storytelling or the legend for, from the facts. Like Paul Revere's ride. That poem actually skewed yeah. some people's like facts of like what Paul Revere. Well, because did. it completely fails to mention. Israel Bissell. Mm -hmm. and, and the way I learned about that, I have to thank, uh, what's his name, who did uh, assume the position? You know, Robert Wall. You know? Oh. Yeah. Kitties gather around and daddy's going to whistle while you tell the story about Israel Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, have you seen that? Have you seen uh, assume the position? Um, I don't think I have. Yeah. Go rent it or get, get, yeah. Cause I, I found that on HBO a long time ago. It's sort of, it's a two part thing. Although I think okay. the first part is better than the second, but he gets completely into that and it's, it's a, it's great fun. It is just great fun. Yeah. I, okay. I, so we have, so we have to, we have recommendations for Tales of Princess Kaguya. Yes. We oh, we're back to this. <laughs> we have recommendations to Fantastic Planets, and we now have recommendations to Assume the Position. Any other recommendations of <laughs> underseen movies? He well, just yeah. asked Lauren. Lauren's yeah. the examples. As long as I'm on a roll, I've got one to throw <laughs> out. I got a list. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is it. one that I, for, don't ask me why. Part of, the, part of it is Lilo Schifrin's score for it, and part of it is Robert Redford's performance in it, Brubaker. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. I remember that. It just there's there's a quality to that that I really really like, and and, and especially at the end when he's confronting uh, Lillian Gray, and uh, and she you know she, she gets flustered and she says, "God damn it, I agree with you." And he comes right back, "No, you don't. Not really. <laughs> you know, just that hard counterpunch. You know, because I, I mean." And the thing is, that's based on a true story. A Walt, uh, Walter O. Merton, who I guess handled a couple of prisons in Arkansas in the late '60s, and uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's dramatized up the yin yang. I have no doubt. But Merton was a, a, a consultant on the flick, so I mean, it, there, there's a degree of credibility there. The other thing there's uh, is, that I think is notable is uh, Yafet uh, Koto's performance in it. Which I, I thought was really, really good. Yeah, that's one I should revisit. It's been a while since I've seen that. Um, I got one. I know I'm I'm I know that I mentioned it in a hangout in, in one of our hangouts here before, but it's been a few years because I, I mentioned it right after I had seen it. And it's a, a relatively unknown <laughs> film called The Swimmer, starring yes. Burt Lancaster. That I is saw that on just, Saturday night at the movies about a oh, zillion years ago. Yeah, it is such a surprising movie. It's really, really well done. Um, it, it ends up going places that you don't expect it to go. Uh, it gets a lot deeper than you than you think it's going to be at the beginning because it's 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 basically Burt Lancaster is this guy kind of going through a midlife crisis and he's swimming at a friend's pool and he gets this harebrained idea that he can that that he can visit all of his friends' houses in between the house that he's at and his own house and they all have pools <laughs> and he can swim his way home. And it's such a weird idea, but it works. The, the, the way that it's explored and, and depicted in the movie is so, so good. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just a really surprising and very, very underseen movie. So that would be one that I would throw out there again as the swimmer. And that's when I haven't mentioned ad nauseum because I didn't mention it when when I was asked that at there for the 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 ask away I didn't think of that. Steve, I got another one for yeah. you. Gene Hackman, the conversation. Oh boy, yes, I love the conversation. I was we were talking about that yesterday because our next movie for uh, late seating that we just recorded yesterday is The Godfather, and Conversation mm. was Coppola's very next film after The Godfather. Yeah, um, that's a fantastic movie. That you want to talk like, about a situation yeah. where just the vocalization and you know just the the way a phrase gets turned makes all the difference yeah. well they're gonna remake it called the hangout right 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyone else that's not Steve, Lauren, or me, any underseen movies that you, your favorite underseen movies you want hey, to don't share? Don't be pushy. I, I, I have, Go ahead, Tom. I, I, uh, I don't know if this is my, it's not my favorite movie, It's, uh, but it is uh, a nostalgic favorite from a favorite of mine, one of them. That's uh, Three Stooges in Orbit. Mm. Oh, hey, oh, I thought you yeah. I don't know. Yeah, has anybody seen that? I, I, yes. I, I, re I recall I one where they, they wind up with this unicorn and go to Venus, I think it is, or something like that. I don't know if that's the same I, flick. I, it, I haven't seen it in, since 1962 yes. when it came out. But I was 14 when it came out. Uh, the three, three Stooges had just, uh, there had been kind of a resurgence of interest in them in the mm -hmm. late 50s. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was seeing them on television, you know, the old the old stuff. Um, and it was just, you know, I, I loved them. And then they, they, they put out a series of movies. And this was the fourth in that series. Uh, came out, like I said, when I was 14. Uh, the uh, uh, I, I was I was living in the space race age, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had we had um, call back to the uh, the slapstick weird you know time before the war, and then we had all this other stuff going on, and then we had the space race coming up, and there was it was so exciting for everybody, and then. The three stooges went into orbit and took the whole thing and just made a, made the three stooges kind of mess out of it. And it was so much fun for me. And I, I it's pre, I'm sure it's a horrible movie. I'm sure that it's nobody else's favorite uh, or even close to favorite. But I remember it was such love and passion. Um, so You're mentioning I, it's, 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 it's not, the, the brow on this one is. <laughs> Not Lauren or Steve. Now is down. Yeah, it's below your nostrils. Well, it's, it's below where you. It's just there now. Actually, yeah. that's yeah, really it, 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 it's yeah, pretty I, low. I really, really don't low. like the Three Stooges, but I'm, I'm really, really fond of that movie. That's mm. it's well worth watching, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you <laughs> you've actually seen that. I have actually seen this. Holy moly. <laughs> it's it's really cool that you brought that movie up too because I was thinking about that movie uh, a couple weeks ago because that is I think that's one of only two movies ever released to be made using the Cinemagic process, mm -hmm. um, which they use to, they reprocess the black and white footage to make it color and to make it look sort of otherworldly and 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 weird and the 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 process that they used for the the first movie to use that um, was the Angry Red Planet which yeah. uh, is, is a, a movie about astronauts that go to Mars and they came up with the cinemagic technique because they could release it as a color film, but they could shoot most of it in black and white and then just tint it. And there, the cinemagic is like this weird technique where it's a tinting process, but it's also, it renders the film kind of half positive, half negative. And it doesn't really look that good, which is the reason why it wasn't used very often, but it was cheap and it was a, a cheap way to make black and white film look like something else. And the only two films ever released with that process being used were the Angry Red Planet and uh, Three Stooges in Orbit. So, so I'm, so it was not necessarily the uh, worst kind of movie to. <laughs> no, not at all. And I, I like the. I, I, so I, 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 I didn't. I didn't imagine anybody younger I, than me I like would, would uh, have remem remembered or liked it. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I like and I like the Three Stooges. I I remember vividly thinking they were funny when I was a kid, and then growing up and not thinking they were funny at all. And then at, and then in my twenties, I was I was standing in the living room with my dad, and he was sitting and watch just flipping through the channels watching TV, and he was watching the Three Stooges. And for some reason, it was just the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. it, it went from being funny to just not funny at all to just yeah. killing me. And yeah. I've been and I've been in that place with the Stooges ever since where it just I they they drop me every time. So it's I don't know what it is where there's one of those weird things where I just got to a point in my life where I was like, yes, yeah, sh OK, shit, the three Stooges are funny. <laughs> you know? 
Chris, do you have a favorite underseen movie that you love to share with your friends or anyone else? Um, other than uh, polyester, probably. <laughs> <laughs> And by the but, way, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, I don't no, see, you go ahead. No, uh, I, I don't see that many un underseen movies that's, yeah. that's you know, but, 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 that aren't on Red Tube. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about oh, one of those. Pornhub, sure. Pornhub, porn there we go. <laughs> hey, Pornhub has a safe for work tab as well, just a random thought. <laughs> just, uh, okay. <laughs> but by the way, uh, but I don't, I don't work. So, <laughs> okay, so okay, that, that's my excuse. I don't work, so I don't use that particular tab. <laughs> <laughs> I use. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, did I say use other tabs? <laughs> I get, Steve, I, Steve yes. can I sneak in here with another one? Yes, yeah, something it. just. I mean, it's a yeah, because it's a wild correlation i come up with here because i remember i get back in college somebody yeah. was doing a uh i think it was uh i don't know it was a porn uh uh festival or something like that but in one of the uh lecture halls that, that we had a case i got my first look at um it wasn't inside the green door what was it oh, damn I, I can't even behind remember the door. The, behind I, the green door no, yeah okay well, and it wasn't that it was it was one of the others. Uh, oh, the Devil and Miss Jones. That's what there it was. You go. Okay, uh, yeah. but that's a good I ended movie. up doing. I mean, I, I I that was the last one that I was able to catch. But in Strosacker Auditorium, now you talk about a great name for an auditorium that where they should show porn, but they had in there <laughs> Visions of Eight. Steve, hmm. are you are you aware of that one at all? I have never heard of that. Visions of think. Eight is eight different directors look. At the 1972 Olympics. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And I don't think it's ever been released. I've been looking for it every on, on and off. It has several different things going on with it. One of the directors tackled beginnings, you know, mm -hmm. like a diver stepping up to the board, a gymnast, you know, walking up to his or her, uh, you know, uh, runner, you know, crouched at you know the starting line, waiting for the gun, and just yeah. and and you know just you know building tension. It was wonderful how they built the tension. Then then gun goes off, you know, uh, whatever have you, and just fast forward all through all of that. They had one thing that dealt with, you know, pain and, you know, and like, especially with, uh, you know, just, you know, injuries during the Olympics. Yeah. And, and that was wild. Uh, yes, they absolutely dealt with black September and what mm -hmm. happened in that time. And then as a contrast to that, they had the, um, uh, they had a bunch of kids coming out and playing in the uh, in the track and field areas. With the kids jumping into the the sand trap at the end of a long jump and stuff like that. I, I forgot what all, what I mean. All eight visions, if you were, but um, but I thought it was really kind of neat. It's it's the kind of thing I would love to collect if it was available. I just I my guess is it's never been popular enough to be considered. Yeah, you know, you, it, it sounded int interesting to me as soon as you started talking about it and it became obvious that it was about some, it, it dealt with aspects of those Olympics other than the massacre because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for, for obvious reasons, the, mm -hmm. the, the massacre at the Munich Olympics is what most people talk about when exactly. they talk about that Olympics. But yeah, to, to, to examine other aspects of those games, yeah, that's that, that kind of piques my interest automatically <clears throat> to sort of you know, to remind people like, you know, this was the Olympics. Where yeah, this but the thing is they, they went into it. I yeah. mean, you know, nobody knew that, you know, the, the whole business with the Israelis and the Palestinians was going to happen. Right. And obviously, I, I mean, this was planned out and set up, you know, as a natural part of the 72 games. And of course, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tragedy became obviously a significant subplot. Mm hmm. Yeah. But the, the yeah. point is, it wasn't the whole thing, and that's the way they treat it. I, I remember, like, I did not see that movie. By the way, Visions of Eight is available on YouTube and Google Play for just $3. So, oh, it's, cool. it's, yeah, so I, it's readily. I'll check it out. 
as right, that's I, my list. I remember hearing about the like uh, the learning about the seventy two Olympics and the Munich massacre or the, uh, the assassination, whatever, yeah. uh, from the Prefontaine uh, movie that starred Jared Leto and stuff like that. Mm. So that's how uh-huh. I know about that. I think that I thought that movie was also pretty good. Yeah. So uh, Kevin, Jacob, Brent. <laughs> You get a chance now. Hey, and by who the way, put you it, in it, charge. It, hey, hey, come on. Let's not give us a chance. I, I don't it's, care. It's fine. It's, I don't, it's, 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 less, it's less shit that I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I'll, hey, let's let's get, get Christy in here. Let her do it again. Okay, yeah, come on. Who do you think you are? She's hosting her own hangout. Yeah, That's Christy's why she's hosting not her here. own show. Yeah. Uh, but a, a favorite Maybe. can also be a favorite bad movie because Lin- Lindsay Ellis on Twitter said her favorite move, underseen movie to share with her friends is Showgirls, 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 Showgirls. Yeah. Showgirls. Yes. Showgirls is a great movie to watch with friends who also appreciate <laughs> bad movies. Like that's that's the ideal setting to watch it in. Mm. You know, yeah. so this, so this, so, oh, you go, sir. Um, I lost turn thought. But the the only time I've ever seen Showgirls, I remember I was I was a teenager and it was on some channel on TV, and I remember I was, I was like, I know this movie has nudity in it, but everyone's wearing tops, and then I realized, oh, they like drew tops on all the women yeah. on the fucking. I was like, what I, the fuck? How else are they going to show it on TV? I mean. Yeah, like, I th- but to seriously draw them with like tank tops. Yeah. Like, is- somebody wanted this movie on TV real bad. <laughs> they said, "Shit, we're just gonna draw clothes on them." Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I like to watch that movie and pretend that Kyle MacLachlan's character is uh, is um, is Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks. <laughs> just during his dark period when he's when he's evil and he's left. You know, it's after Twin Peaks is over. Uh, That's I was thinking what- deep cover. Yeah, <laughs> deep cover. <laughs> yeah. The um to to bring it around, there's there's an yeah. interesting uh, book about um Joe Esterhouse and Mel Gibson spent like six weeks living together to try and develop a movie, which apparently they both went crazy and binge drank the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Esterhaus apparently is the same brand of Catholic who would have known from his movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm familiar with this book. I haven't read it, but I've, I think Nathan Rabin did a review of it for yes, one of his like, AV Club articles. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's that's where I found it initially. Yeah, and I, I don't never remember the name. I'm so sorry. But I think <laughs> the the movie was going to be about the Maccabees. Yes, um, but I, yeah, I don't know the title of the book, but yeah, they, they, think about it. This was yeah, Mel Gibson, I guess, would have produced or directed, and Joe Esterhaus would have written, and it would have been um, a movie about the Maccabees, like the legendary Hebrew warriors from the Old Testament. And uh, God damn it, don't you kind of wish that movie had been made? Well, that we're, been the, no, we're already in the dark timeline, so that's that, true. That movie doesn't exist. Is <laughs> like it's shocking that that movie wasn't made. Uh, this, this will kind of show you how little I know. This is probably the second time in my life I've heard the word Maccabees, and I think the first time was the Rugrats Hanukkah special. I think I, I think I'm exactly as old as some of the Rugrats characters. I have to check on that to be sure. <laughs> you know, there's a series for you: the Rugrats, twenty years on. Yeah, apparently, apparently they are remaking their rights again because they had the yeah, but they had an age. Up. Yeah, that's true. Unless they have some really they like peanuts, right? Just, just keeping tiny babies. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be so they'll be adult babies. They'll be adult characters, but in the bodies of babies. And, and now that got me thinking. That's I saw a show. I, I've seen a show where they weren't babies, but they're like a couple of five year old characters and like a fourth grader, fifth grader, and a sixth grader. But yet they were adult characters, uh, crime school detectives. And my my brothers were like, these are adult characters. Yet this girl's supposed to be five years old. <laughs> she should not be hot and bothered by touching another boy character. She's five. <laughs> you remember back when you were kindergarten? You were like, boys are have cooties. And yet this character is hot and bothered. <laughs> no, she. She just blushes. She just blushes. That's all she does because it's, it was a children's show. Anyway. It's, the, it's, it's the symbol of the moral degradation of this generation. <laughs> yeah. But I, I will say, today, like, I don't know. 
Uh, of, of all the common things I'll see in, from time to time, it's the yeah. switching bodies I'm completely done with. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like, it feels like no one can ever do anything good with it. Yeah, yeah. It, okay, it, they, it always goes somewhere close. All the same things, and you're like, come yeah. on. Yeah, what, just don't... You mean like Freaky Friday or 18 uh -huh. again or something? Or yeah. in uh, half a dozen other movies like yeah. Jumanji or... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jumanji and uh, it, it, that Jason big, Bateman movie awesome. where they, they, they piss in the same stream or something. They piss into the same fountain and they switch bodies. You know, it might actually be an interesting concept if there was a TV series that was just that. Two people switch bodies... And that's the series. Like right. it's not just a one episode thing. Like that might actually be kind of yeah. interesting. There was one back in the seventies, and I can and it, of course next sorry, month. I'll, <laughs> next month I'll, I'll remember the name. <laughs> next month I'll write it down. I promise when I remember. What, what about a series where a guy from the future takes over the bodies of people in the past? And he tries to change things in history that went wrong the first time. Uh, are, are we quantum leaping and now? Has, and, he has, and he has to change it before he can leap into the next life. Get that yeah. Maccabee movie made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah body swapping. That, that happens in pornos too. Body swapping uh, has been done in pornos too. I can only imagine. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't particularly care for time travel. Are these pornos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you were mentioning Steve with Voyagers. Yeah. Like the problem with time traveling stuff yeah. is there's no finality to anything they do. Yeah, yeah you can always just, overwrite it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's my main problem. Well, I mean, that was one of my main problems with the Arrow is how many death fake outs and stuff they had going on, and also with the Flash yeah. as well because it felt like okay, somebody's dead in this universe. We'll bring him in from an alternate universe. Yeah. When you when you start playing with that. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, mm. Well, and then and then when they don't do it, the question is, well, why not? Like yeah. if, so, if they do kill someone and leave them dead, shit, why not just go back in time and bring them back or go into another universe and bring them back? Like it just, or, it, it, or, yeah. Or you just start sitting there, like never really feeling like they're truly gone. You figure like yeah. some, to some point they're going to come bring them back. Yeah. Uh, that I, I remember one of the many criticisms that I read for like one of the, the Star Trek nerd criticisms of the people who were like longtime fans who didn't like the first, the, the new movie, the first JJ Abrams movie was they were really pissed off about how Vulcan was destroyed. And mm. they said like, why would Vulcan be destroyed? And why would they leave it destroyed in a universe where there's time travel, where you can just go back a few days and, and stop the planet from being destroyed. And I thought, and it's exactly what you're just saying. It's like, because that possibility exists, it, it feels like something that should be incredibly final and devastating. So, well, why don't they just fix it? Because they established that they have the way to fix it. Well, okay, I can. I have an answer to that. Let's actually think about that. Would that make a better movie? Oh no, no. Absolutely yes, exactly. Not. That's, that's, so, the, that's well, the real answer. But yeah, and that's one, why, that's one why, other thing, Steve. Yeah, think yeah. about the end of Deadpool too, <laughs> where they act. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, no, I'm sorry, there is. Yeah. They underline Leto that whole has thing. Not seen it and she's as, far, as far as I'm concerned, I would just as soon that uh, Wade have Nessa again and and be done with it because, no, nah, I mean, yeah. let's, let's, I'm very let's sorry, have a Leto happy ending, ending at the end for a change. <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah. But, little, I know I'm very sorry if you haven't seen it because, yeah, it's, it, 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 I'm very sorry, Little, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't seen it because she's. I'm, wait, I'm just she, sorry you haven't seen it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so she she's waiting for it to be available on like Netflix or YouTube or Amazon, yeah. just like yeah, just like all the other films that we mentioned watch that it. like yeah are available streaming. Watch it at home mm. like a regular person. Yeah, <laughs> but sure, I'll do that. Like, who goes to a theater? Well, I do. I have Movie Pass. That's why I do, <laughs> do that. I got, I got to get my money's worth. Yeah, I mean, but I've got say to occasionally. Uh, sorry, uh, occasionally, like when I was looking at at time travels or parallel dimensions, occasionally yeah. there are people who can do something interesting with it. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I really. think probably the best example I've seen. Well, this was in a video game, Bioshock Infinite, where they're exploring parallel dimensions. Mm -hmm. and this guy's trying to stop a dictator, and then he thinks, "Well, what if I go and stop him from existing entirely?" And someone with the power to go through like alternate dimensions takes him there. But what he finds out, it's himself. Yes. Uh, it was, was like, and it comes at you yeah. so quickly right at the end. And like, he actually goes back to where the timelines diverges 
and kills himself. Yeah, that was an interesting. And, ending, and like yeah. you, see, it, it comes at you so fast at the end. You're just sitting there at the credits, like. What the fuck just You're happened? Clabbered. <laughs> there was a something similar on, I think it was a Twilight Zone reboot, where a guy goes back to, to witness what's going on with Elvis Presley, and it, except that Presley ends up taking a direction that he is completely incorrect. He ends up killing Presley and assuming the identity. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's interesting. You're doing Elvis wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, any way you do do Elvis is doing Elvis wrong. I never cared for the guy, but <laughs> I, that's, hey, that's my, that is that is my trip. Baba Hotep is an excellent way to do Elvis. Elvis <laughs> yes. is like still alive in a retirement home with a gi giant growth on this on his pecker. Yeah, uh, that's that's the only hey, way to do hey, Elvis hey, properly. Any any Bruce Campbell is the right way to do Bruce Campbell. Yeah, is exactly. what Bruce, you're Bruce saying. Campbell Elvis is <laughs> yes, yes and like oh, what's the other guy? I forgot his name. He uh, was great in Bubble Hotel too. Uh, Ozzy Davis. Davis. You mean Black JFK? Yeah, yeah, Black JFK. I forgot Ozzy Davis. Ozzy Davis. Davis. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, but back to, to the earlier point is like that Jacob brought up and that this is a common complaint that moviegoers have. Hey, why did this character do X? And the, that's just Dan Olson like quote tweeted reply quote tweeted reply to like what is the one thing that your what is the one mistake that your profession keeps on yeah. making whatsoever? Oh, yeah. And he said. Characters' mistakes are not plot holes. Yeah, I saw that. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to buy him a beer for that one because that, that there are so many times where where people complain about things that happen in movies and they and they say it's a plot hole, and it's just a character making a different choice than you think they should have made. And and that's not a plot hole. Jack, I, 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 I happened once in a uh, when I was going back and playing this video game I played a couple years ago. I didn't like it at the time because I feel like there wasn't enough development or they like the storyline didn't go in different directions. Yeah. And now I'm replaying it a couple years later and go, actually, I'm going, actually, I'm glad they didn't go in that direction. I'm glad mm -hmm. they didn't go down that. I'm like, they could have created a love triangle right here, but th that would have added nothing to the story. Yeah, exactly. And it was. Which video game was that? Final Fantasy 12. Oh, I gotta replay that one because, like, people complain about that gamut system because of the game playing itself, basically <laughs> masturbating. Hey, but uh, <laughs> but the story seems very interesting. However, the main character of Final Fantasy XII should not be the main character of Final Fantasy XII. It should be the princess character. Yeah, she should have been. Yeah, yeah. should have been the main character. And they're just like, but no, I'll play a game unless the main character's a twelve-year-old with his chest bare. <laughs> and yet, the next game, oh, yeah. they made the woman be the main character. Final Fantasy Thirteen, it was lightning. Yeah, the, uh, the, the writing in twelve is kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Well, oh, actually, no. the writing in thirteen is a lot more. Well, especially thirteen too, because it is so over the top writing, and the voice acting is so <laughs> over the top. But I'm I love it. To it. <laughs> I'd love it though, because it's they can make like. Getting lunch, the most dramatic thing in the world. Well, it's just like <laughs> it's anime just voice acting. It's just like anime voice acting. If you're not like screaming in pain or just going, oh, and just over exaggerating your emotions, that's not anime and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Steve, uh, since yeah. I just mentioned anime, Wings at Aoyama is. Since you just did mention anime. <laughs> <laughs> what a common oh, character. No, no, anyway, you were, you were saying I have Wings a of timer of switch. <laughs> <laughs> Wings of on the Arms is a really good movie as well. Roller Space yeah. Defense Force brings the world. I agree. No, everyone should see that movie. Yeah, Wings of like, the is amazing. Yes. And it was like yeah. the first ever film for the studio <laughs> Gynax. They never made any like serious animation project like that. They, and they just like had a pilot or something or they showed like their Daikon 4 video and Bandai at the time because it's the 80s and like they had more money Japan had more money that they know what to do with. Here you go, make a movie, and they made Wings of Oriums. And yeah, yeah, it's the, a terrific it's, movie. Yes, the attempted rate scene. It's uh, yeah. It's I mean, it, it's, it's one of those movies. Well, I think it's one of those movies that because so much great anime came out in the '90s in, uh -huh. in terms of cinema that it kind of got lost. Yeah. You know, because there are just tons of amazing Japanese animated films that come out from right after that or from mm -hmm. around that same. Because I think, well, Grave of the Fireflies was around the same time. It was not, maybe not the exact same well, year, is, but it was. Cause cause Wings of Oniyama's. Yeah. When, was that Wings of Oniyama's was 88? No, uh, Grave of the Fireflies was 88. Okay. Because I think, because Wings of Oniyama's was 87, wasn't it? Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So, so, yeah. So it kind of got lost by like this, this 
the very next year out comes this movie that is like one it's still considered one of the masterpieces of of the genre and it's like oh yeah that yeah and the, the space movie was good too but but uh yeah the space movie is really good yeah and i just checked it's 87 yeah is on I, so. I remember that i i saw i saw that movie i think i found out about that because that was actually reviewed on siskel and ebert mm -hmm. um, and they gave it a very high review you know they, mm. they praised it very very well and i thought well shit, i should see that and it must have been I, I but it wasn't when it first came out because i was seven and i don't right. think i was watching siskel and ebert when i was seven mm -hmm. but I, they might it must have been like a special episode where they were talking about mm -hmm. like their favorite animated films or something because yeah. they they mentioned it and it uh they they really talked it up and i was like well shit, i should see that yeah, that's <laughs> interesting too because they didn't review anime that often i think they may, no. they may have done stuff like spirited away and uh howl's Great moving surprise. castle and stuff like that but yeah. it was very much the exception and not the rule yeah if yes. it got like a wide release they yes. would review it but if it wasn't they didn't go out of their way like to look for anime. exactly so yeah. they would sometimes talk about it then super ebert seemed to like know of it which is why he would sometimes compare like uh atlantis the disney movie which i think is a fine movie too and I think it's an underrated movie too. And he compared that to anime and stuff like that. But like, no, whenever any animated movie gets a wide release, a wide enough release, like when Solomon I mean, did hit mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the indie uh, film festival circuits or the international film festival circuits. So that's probably how Ebert saw that. Yeah. Uh, that's probably how Ebert saw Perfect Blue because he gave that like a, a or like some a famous uh, movie critic said is kind of like if. They say Perfect Blue is if Disney and Hitchcock made a movie together. I kind of agree. Wow. Yes, Perfect Blue is that movie. That's Great quite movie. a combination. That, that, yes. That's what you call a real juxtaposition there. Yeah. Disney think, and Hitchcock? Whoa. I think I think we, I think it's because it's like it was animated Hitchcock essentially, yeah. and that and that the film critic has no other reference for like mature animation, and so yeah. his only uh, reference. Oh, he for didn't animation. know about Miyazaki or any of those other guys, huh? Right, exactly. Or Akira, <laughs> which Akira, great film, also came out in '88. So that's probably how Wings and Aoyama's just got like pushed to the sidelines because oh my god, Akira! And, oh my god, yeah. Akira party. was a yeah. big yeah, it was super popular. You know, I do always... not remake Akira. Akira, do not remake Akira. I did not make an American version of Akira. Uh, no. I'll be honest. I don't see the Remake draw of Akira. anything you want. I don't see <laughs> I'm, no, I'm seriously. May remake anything you want. The original film still exists. Yeah. If you True. don't want to have a remake, don't watch it. Yeah. Put oh, in yeah, a DVD right. of Akira. Yeah. I got, but you know, Brett just sort of piped up and said he doesn't get Akira. Right. Akira is not one of my favorites either, to be honest. I, 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 res I, I respect it. Like I get why it's, I, I, you know, I uh, acknowledge it's a very it's, strange it's movie. It's I, influence and its popularity, but it's not one of my favorites either. I, I could talk to be for, honest. I could talk for an hour about what I, why I don't think it's that good, but <laughs> we don't have an hour, and, and we talk for five hours. For, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brent, we can do like our own like hangout and stuff like that with or yeah. anyone else that wants to join and it was just like talk about movies or anything like that. Fighting about Akira. It, but I think of like well, Akira was also like based off of manga, so it's like yeah. there's the possibility that like they try to cram as much stuff from the manga as like cameos or references and stuff like that. And it's a kind of joke amongst anime fans. Oh, the manga is better. Have you read the manga? <laughs> no, but that's what I've heard. I assume it's better. <laughs> Well, but and Akira opened a lot of doors because Akira mm -hmm. was so popular. I mean, a, a lot of people, I know a lot of people that Akira was the first anime yeah. film that they ever saw. Um, so regardless of whether I think it's a great movie or not, like it's uh, undeniably it kicked in a lot of doors in the United States for people. Influential. To, yeah. Sorry, which yeah, movie was it again? Akira. 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 A uh, oh. and no. A I have I have read the manga and it isn't better. So <laughs> <you're all laughs> <people. laughs> so fuck you. <laughs> not to be confused yeah. with not to be confused <laughs> not to be confused with Ikiru, which is one of my favorite films ever and is mm. very different. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah, to be, uh, not to be confused with Akira, which is where I go for uh, Hibachi every now and then. <laughs> Or Akira Kurosawa, the great or Akira director. Kurosawa, yeah. Yes. I mean, oh, any, uh, any of his uh, films, at least his films are interesting, but he makes so many good films. Yeah. Hidden Fortress, Yojin. Akira, Akira is not about Akira Kurosawa. 
Yes. I'll stick with, I'll stick with Akira Toriyama, who made Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I have not seen Dragon Ball I, I've seen a little bit of Dragon Ball Z when I was eight years old. And it's like, okay, I, I, I stopped watching for like a few months. And I came back and I was like, wait a minute. Goku is still training? I missed the show for like six weeks. And Goku is still training for his fight for against Vegeta? What? And I never watched the show ever since then. Yeah. Wow. Well, basically, yeah. Basically, basically what happened is they, they didn't get the rights to the entirety of the show. So they just kept replaying all the early episodes for forever. Mm. And then like years later, they finally got the rest of it. And it's like, oh, yeah, on Cartoon Network. That's probably where yeah. like a, a lot of the fan base, a lot of the American anime fan base like saw uh, the yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, training only takes one month, Taj. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I got my gym membership for one month, Taj. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, D Daniel had what, like two months in Karate Kid, something like that. The, yeah. the school starts in September. the The tournaments in December, so like three months, he was ready. He mm -hmm. won that motherfucker. So come on, <laughs> and kicks his face because <laughs> he kick and kicks <laughs> wins with an illegal kick. <laughs> Which I love that he's still pissed about in in Cobra Kai. Like he mm -hmm. mentions it a couple of times throughout that series when he's telling people about you know the tournament that he lost. He's like, and then he kicked me in the face, which was an illegal. Kick, yeah, well, just as illegal as getting <laughs> getting the leg sweep, or, yeah, or you know, yeah. you know. So you know, hey, I mean, you know, two, two wrongs don't make a right, but uh, three yeah. lefts will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did the refs allow us? Because it will make an interesting fight scene in the movie. Because it's the climax of the movie. I, I'm telling you, so many, so many bouts of nerd rage could be. <sighs> If not completely, <laughs> if not completely cured, at least uh, reduced significantly. If everybody would just would repeat like a mantra, the the lyrics from the Mystery Science Theater theme song. Just repeat to yourself. It's just a show. I can't really, la, la, la. just relax. La, la, la. <laughs> I saw. I want. I, I want to make one point about that, and then and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap up because we're at yeah. the end of the hour. But. Um, Someone in one of my recent Star Trek videos, somebody left a comment. It was it was my when I talked about the the season two trailer for Star Trek Discovery, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. someone left a comment and said, um, "Are they going to explain why all the Starfleet uniforms have the Enterprise insignia?" Which is a pull from way back in classic Trek, because in classic mm -hmm. Trek, whenever they would show the crew of a different starship, they would all have a different patch, a different all, crest. Yes. Yeah. And then after, and then in the movies, they just said, "Now nah, forget that. Everybody just has the Arrowhead thing." And so this commenter is like, "Are they going to explain why everybody has the same thing?" And I'm like, "Yeah, gee, I hope they do. Like that's really been bothering me." <laughs> well, the thing episode. to keep in mind too, it's the, it's the Prime Universe, is it not? Yeah, yeah. And the Prime Universe that it, I'm going to take a guess and say that never happened. So you're yeah. trying to connect something from the the original to the Prime, yeah. which is a no-op. Well, the other thing is, I mean. And I, I made this point in in one of my videos. Is that it's just it's 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 a retcon. They just changed it. Mm -hmm. So they're they're not they're not going to explain it. They just changed it. It's just like what well, you know. Michael Keaton as Batman and Val Kilmer as Batman <laughs> are supposed to be the same person. And George they, Clooney. And George yeah. Clooney. They're all supposed to be the same person. They exist in the same continuity. But they, they it's not like Alfred wakes up one day and go, "Oh, your plastic surgery is healing well, Master Bruce." Like, <laughs> You just accept it because it's just the way it is. You know? It's uh, Ter Terrence Howard and Don Cheadle are supposed to be the same yeah, character, and exactly. they did they, they just like do it brilliantly in one line. I'm just like, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm here, and here we are. Yeah, and exactly. It's, like, it's kind and, of like a nod and wink to the audience, and, and plus. It's better if they don't explain it. Yeah. Like, why the Klingons look different in it's the original series and the next generation? It you was know, better my, if they didn't explain that. My favorite. I, I, can, I, I, I can answer like that question in two words: makeup budget. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> my favorite example of that recently was in the 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 Tick series on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, between the pilot episode and and the second episode, uh, they change the Tick's costume. So, but but the second episode picks up right after the pilot leaves off. So it's like from one scene to the next, the Tick has a completely different costume, and. Uh, they're in the alley, like after the action dies down, and Arthur looks at the Tick. He kind of looks him up and down, and he says, "You look different." And the Tick just goes, "Thanks." <laughs> <laughs> Just, just mention it, yeah. And, and then, like, everyone knows it. Like in the first turtles yeah. movies, I love how. Yeah. What is that? Oh, just a giant turtle. Whatever. Continue the drive. The world acknowledges giant turtles in New York, but don't care. Yeah, it's it's not that important. 
Like, just tell the story, for God's sake. Um, all right. So uh, thank you, as always, everybody, for watching. Thank you, as always, all of you, especially people who are here with me for joining me and making this a fun hour again and for being my patrons and supporting me, uh, which is just the most awesome thing in the world. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, if you watch these or you watch my other videos and you want to get in on this or you just want to help me continue making videos, you can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron. I, I greatly appreciate all the help and all the support. Um, and yeah. So we'll do this again next month. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.